Hi folks, Jason here. I'm really excited about today's video. We're going to be delving into a, a stable diffusion add-on for Blender where you can create some, quite frankly, some mind-boggling scenes with just very, very simple geometry. Now I'm just going to get into it. You can see here, I've just created a little scene here using that plugin uh, from a, a really basic scene that I created in Blender. And I'm just going to go through just some of the uh, some of the uh, slides here, so you can see it's like a sort of desert scene. I did put some of these kind of strange lights in, which I sort of took out um, eventually. But um, what it does is basically you can create a, um, a scene like the previous one that I just showed you, and then it can basically create another iteration from that, and then from there it just keeps creating iterations if you want it to, and the results are mind blowing. Um, I know there's a lot of anxiety with a lot of artists at the moment because of AI and, and because of what it can do. I think it can be a sort of like a, a symbiotic relationship uh, that we could potentially have with it without giving ourselves completely over to it. Um, I know that sounds a little bit Faustian, but um, I think there's some scope here, particularly for like the artists, so not for people who just kind of type in words in into um, you know into like one of these um, an AI sort of um, uh, programs but um, from a point of view of as a 2d artist or a 3d artist sort of you know taking this information and then sort of photo bashing you know it's a starting point something that you can kind of you know that you can um, sort of use but it is pretty amazing uh, what you can do with it now this is just from a very simple scene I'm just going to kind of show you now uh, like I say I kind of put the clouds in um, uh, uh, afterwards but I've created like a basic plane. I put like a like a wave modifier on there for just going there. It's a where where was it? Ocean. There we go. And just kind of created this kind of like bumpy surface. And then very very simple uh, sort of geometry. There's there's not a lot to it. It's just a cube that's tapered at the end. And I've kind of you know put those there. And then uh, for the clouds, they're just spheres that I've just sort of joined together. And put a bit of a blue screen. If I just zoom back a little bit, you can see it there. Uh, but then, but the results, as you've, as you've seen, are pretty amazing. Now, for those of you who may have seen my uh, previous video, so I did a, a video just recently where I took an AI um, uh, render and essentially modeled from it and uh, basically created this kind of, um, you know, very sort of basic geometry and then ended up sort of extruding from it. I put like a, a sort of um, a bit of displacement on there and... Um, the results are, you know, uh, just like a something you could have, like dressed into a scene in a game. Now I took that, I took the the finished kind of rendered image of that, and if I just now move that uh, just out of the way, um, I took that and then put it uh, into um, Blender and in, well into the into the plugin in uh, Blender, and these are the results. So it's taken uh, essentially this. And created these different iterations, which again, it's it's just incredible if you look at some of the detail on there. Um, for I think it's like for me, it's like ideas. It's like it, it gives me ideas about doing other things. I don't want it to do all the work, but in terms of like like say using a mood board or something like that, um, just coming up with concepts. Um, I think you know the results are, are very exciting. I mean, look, it's even sort of created like a weapon, um, and I think it's like a starting point. So for me, my take on a lot of this AI stuff that's going on at the moment is, it's an opportunity to kind of aid your own creativity, not necessarily to get rid of you as an artist, because it's not anywhere near replacing uh, artists as, uh, per se. You know, having been someone who's worked, uh, you know, um, certainly in the in the uh, film industry, you know, as a uh, many things, but also working as a concert artist it's um uh those skills are still needed there are certain things whether you're working with a director you know or a producer they need things in a certain way and to look in a certain way and um this can't quite be achieved yet uh, with ai now may it be coming down the line possibly but uh, but anyway enough of that just today i just wanted to kind of show you some examples of what you can do and how you can uh, install this so I'm not going to go into like a lot of detail, but 
If I uh, just kind of show you a few things like, for example, how do you get this? Well, I'm going to put a link for you uh, in the description. But essentially, uh, you have to create a Dream Studio account. So you can see this is mine here. Uh, so you need to go into Dream Studio. Now, I've actually, you don't have to pay for it, but you get like a limited number of generations. So I've kind of given $10 and uh, it's given me, uh, I think, gave me around about 1000 um, different generations so you can do that but you get get stuff for free and so that's fine um, but when it comes to um, trying to install um, the uh, the download let me just bring that up uh, on my page I think I've got it somewhere is it there we go so basically once you kind of click on the link you'll be presented with this and you essentially if you want to like don't want to pay anything for it that's fine so just click on the link and you can download the ex uh, the uh, the zip file. Once you've got the zip file, you'll need to go into Edit and Preferences. And obviously, I've got it already, but I've just typed in AI there. And once you've got it, you can see there uh, AI Render, Stable Diffusion, and Blender. You'll need to basically put like a, a a key in there. So if I just scroll down there, it's really quick to do. All you need to do is like sign up for Dream Studio free. So if you've created an account, that's great. It'll send you through to there. But basically, it'll give you like an API key. All you need to do is copy it on that page and then paste it in there, and you are good to go. So anyway, moving back to it, we've got our uh, little scene here. And I could create um, any scene that I wanted to, but you know, I just did something like this, like a little desert scene. And essentially what you do is you... Um, um, set your scene up, put some lights in there, as you can see that really, really basic. I mean, very, very basic. And um, you go through to the um, uh, render, and then you'll see that it kind of pops it in there. And if you hover over the little illustration here, it gives you all different types of styles that you can use. And if I just move my uh, mouse up here, you can see there you've got all these different types of styles that you can use. Uh, surreal and there's uh, iridescent and all manner of things and once you've sort of decided oh, this one I've done here is like a um, well I had <laughs> should I say a sci-fi concept let me just go back to that there we go sci-fi concept and um, all you need to do is put a prompt in now if you've used uh, AI before it's, it is a lot of it is about the uh, the prompt so in here um, I put in um, uh, old uh, ruined monoliths unreal engine octane renderer Extreme Detail, Sci-Fi, Fantasy, Halo, God of War, 8K. Now, obviously, you can put more in there, but those are the kind of prompts I put in there. And essentially, what you need to do is just set the camera up. So if I just come back through to here, uh, I'm just going to go through to View and uh, click on the camera to view, and then uh, and press uh, Control-Alt and uh, 0 when it lets me do it. There we go. Now, it has to be set at 512 by 512. That, that's the ratio. So if you're setting your camera up with a standard 16 by 9, it will give you a prompt here, um, probably somewhere at the top. You just need to click on it, and it'll basically create this for you. And then away we go. Let's just go and do a render. So I'm going to go through to uh, Render and Render Image. And you have to give it a second. And here we are, and it's created like a, um, a render of uh, the scene, uh, but with some added other features. It is mind blowing uh, what this is doing. It's taken some basic kind of um, information in 3D form and then basically <laughs> creating the scene. And as I said, as an artist, you could then sort of take this. And then just start photobashing in Photoshop with it. You know, you could even potentially take some of this and create a 3D scene using the, uh, like the previous video I did, using the uh, project from view. You could actually create some geometry and project some of this stuff on there and actually create like a sort of semi 3D scene that you could kind of light, maybe even put a character in. Now, here's some other cool stuff with this program. We've uh, we've uh, done the render. If you go into the, so you may not see it, but if you go to the advanced uh, options, we've got some other things here where you can play around with the similarity. So at the moment, I've got it on 0.47. Uh, 
The less similar you make it, the more random it'll make the image, uh, or you can sort of keep it r uh, roughly there. The steps as well kind of add to the kind of different uh, variations, and then you've got the prompt strength as well. So some of this is like kind of hit and miss, but if you kind of play around with some of these um, uh, parameters, you get some very, very interesting results. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so I'm going to leave those as is for the minute, and I'm going to come down to here where it says run manually. And I can either do another uh, render from that um, from um, the original image, so new image from last render, or I can do a new image based on that. So I'm going to go and click new image from last AI image. I'm going to click on that. Let's give it a second. And now it's created that. And it's put some clouds in there, some fairly you know realistic clouds in there. And you can just keep going. So I can just go again. Let's give it a second. There we go. And it goes on and on and on. But as I was saying before, this is uh, not perfect. There's, it's got some strange little kind of artifacts here. Uh, this is quite interesting. But this is stuff where it's almost like you could use it as a little kit to do some photo bashing. So you could take these elements and go, okay, I'll have a bit of that. I want some more of those, and maybe I'll change the shape of them. Sky, maybe I'll take the sky out and replace it with something else. Or oh, I've got these kind of like ancient kind of ruins and things like that there. Or maybe I'll kind of play around with those. Um, so it, it's, you know, and you can just keep going with it. So let's just do another one. Let's give it a second. And then we've got this. Um, it's, it's pretty staggering what can be achieved with this and like i say from a creative's point of view from an artist's point of view i see this as like a starting point and something that you can kind of build on because also you're getting a lot of like the values in there you're getting a lot of these kind of atmospherics where you know you're kind of seeing a bit of the kind of like you know the it's not entirely black right and things like that and a bit of haze and you could just start building on it and start you know building these worlds uh, based off of this if you weren't kind of happy with it, you could go back to the uh, um, to the original. Maybe even pick, um, you know, uh, pick a, a different kind of scene, right? So you can kind of go, if you wanted to do that, just go back to layout. You can see there we've already got the kind of camera set up there and go, well, I want like something a bit more, a bit more close up. So you can kind of go close up and maybe something like that as well. So it's kind of like low angle. You kind of go there. And, uh, and maybe even a different style. So maybe even we could look at something like... Um, is this uh, uh, is it Vadim Kashin? That's how you pronounce it. Maybe try something like that, right? It's got to be sort of suitable for the uh, for the for what you're doing. So I've got that there, and then all we need to do from there is go to render, render image. Let's give it a sec, and there we are. Um, yeah, I, as you might tell, I, I am blown away by this because. In some senses, you are creating this. In other senses, not. It's a, like I say, it's a kind of symbiotic um, um, sort of relationship going on here. It's got the basic principles of of what you're doing, but it's it's interpreting them using different artistic styles, and then from there, um, you can sort of develop them. So, and again, from that, you can even just do another iteration from that last image, and see what else it comes up with. Again, it's just incredible. Um, as I mentioned before, you can play around with some of this as well, like the similarity at the moment. You can, uh, you can, you know, the, t the maximum is fifty, but if you sort of take it down to say, I don't know, say something like twenty. Uh, let's take that up to say twenty. I could even just key it in. Let's put in twenty, and then uh, go new image from that. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. There we go. So because I've uh, changed the similarity, it's now just reaching, you know, it's reaching out for other things. It's kind of put this thing in here, which is like an old, almost looks like part of a cathedral, you know. I'm not sure if this is working or not, but it's interesting because it's creating these stones now and it's looking a bit more mossy, a bit more grassy. And uh, we've got some uh, some rocks here. But it's kind of keeping the spirit of the original image. And uh, it could just keep going and keep going and keep going. But... Um, but that is pretty much it, folks. You know, um, hopefully, you know, uh, you could use this as a tool for your own. See there, you know, it's just crazy. Use it as a tool for your own work. 
and just see what results you come up with. And, uh, you know, just start creating some stuff. Start having some fun with it. And, uh, and then maybe even take your finished results, put it through this, and just see what else your, um, uh, you know, this, this uh, renderer comes up with. And, uh, you know, I'm anything for ideas and creativity. And this is highly creative. It used in conjunction with your own creativity. Um, I think it promises to be, uh, you know, p potentially a kind of new era in uh, concept art. But, uh, but that's it, folks. So anyway, so thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you found this useful. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.